with Daniel Sinstrom. I'm with Operation Heartland. Times get tough. You know, that's that's life. And no matter how bad, how dark, how much you're falling down that rabbit hole, reach out. You know, because there I guarantee you there is somebody who cares for you. Art therapy was introduced to me in, in a setting that I that I really look back on now and, and see as one of the um, a really big turning points in my life. Okay, yes. We are bored. We're all bored now. But has it ever occurred to you, Wally, that the process that creates this boredom that we see in the world now may very well be a self-perpetuating, unconscious form of brainwashing created by a world totalitarian government based on money, and that all of this is much more dangerous than one thinks? And it's not just a question of individual survival, Wally, but that somebody who's bored is asleep, and somebody who's asleep will not say no. On this episode of Struggle Beyond the Decade, I will learn some of the internal components of therapeutic methodologies centered around the expression of art. Often therapeutic hierarchy treatments are centered on cognitive and group sessions. Since my own recovery, I have been introduced to many unorthodox therapy alternatives. My first stop in Florida was in St. Petersburg at the Veterans Art Center of Tampa Bay, where I met up with retired Major Scott Maxim. Now their goal at the Veterans Art Center is to provide therapy, healing wellness, and educational programs to military veterans, first responders, and their families. Let's hear what Scott had to say. Uh, I am Scott Maxim, uh, United States Army retired, AKA Major Mac Daddy, and I am the founder and director of the Veterans Art Center Tampa Bay. And this is Florida's first art center for our military, our veterans, first responders, and families. And we provide therapy, healing, wellness, and educational programming. Okay, so what was the, um, when, did, when did the art center get started? Um, when I started the officer's training program at University of South Florida St. Petersburg campus, it was literally running with our cadets at 5.30 and 6 a.m. in the morning, and it was just kind of like one of those uh, premonitions or epiphanies that uh, came to me, and nobody's ordered me to do this, nobody's told me to do this or asked me. This is just something that in terms of uh, my 20 years in the Army that I felt that this is a place where we can encompass change, we can heal through uh, the arts, through mental health and healing, we can reduce suicides with the suicide epidemic in our nation as well. So, you know, through the arts, through visual and performing, I think this will be a very special place as we create a very, very unique endeavor for the state of Florida, for our military, our veterans, our first responders and families. Okay, so what kind of programs are offered? Though? Sure, um, one is the uh, VATCB Art Boot Camp uh, with uh, John Kattenberg, where uh, those that are, haven't took up the arts can learn the basic skill sets of becoming an artist, may it be uh, watercolors or oils, for example. So it gives them the feeling that they don't have to be masteries in arts, that they as, as a group can together learn the basics of art. That's just one example. 
but the big thing is is uh, to make them feel that uh, this is a place for them to feel comfortable with and utilizing something through the arts, maybe visual performing, to think outside the box, to redevelop them, to re-gauge them, and to inspire them through something called arts. So what are some of the some of the results you've seen? The testimonials that we've got so far that we've been doing this, the, the most powerful is Larry Busby, which is our suicide prevention story. Um, he was a Navy vet, lost everything, alcohol, and so he has a, a powerful story that we, he will always tell on the podium about the center and about our programs, and now he is nested in with the center as one of our preferred veteran artists. Um, another story that we've done is Willie Rogers, and Willie Rogers, was a hundred year old Tuskegee Airman living in downtown St. Petersburg. I knew Willie and also knew Greg Crumley. And Greg Crumley lives in Lakeland, Florida. And he uh, was a Army Ranger. He got injured in Just Cause in an aircraft accident. He got out of the Army. He got shot in the line of duty as a police officer in Pittsburgh. So he's doubly uh, disabled. He took up the arts, a portrait artist. I asked Greg Crumley to do a portrait of Willie Rogers. And this is back in 2015. And he goes, yeah, I'll do it. So uh, I'm screwing to plan for the presentation event. And I will tell you that within, you could bring in 150, 200 people for a specific presentation to Willie Rogers, which I always say is sometimes in the arts is, is what you not see is what you hear. And when you can get this many people together for this specific event, and you have Willie Rogers and Chief Warrant Officer Greg Crumley together at this portrait, is very, very powerful and moving. But Willie Rogers just recently passed away in January. And what was at his, that's, or his funeral? The portrait. So his family has the portrait. We have a story to tell, to unify our community, to make stories, to make memories, and do individual memorials through this thing called arts. My name is John McKittrick. I'm retired U.S. Army officer uh, retired in 2006 and I'm the operations director here at the Veteran Arts Center Tampa Bay. I, when I retired in 2006 uh, I guess a lot of the intensity that I enjoyed uh, from being in the military, uh, the purpose that I felt like I was serving to do uh, started falling by the wayside and I became pretty much disillusioned as an individual <clears throat> and uh, I guess, you know, with my brain wandering the way it did, I uh, just a lot of things that probably I should have dealt with in a more healthy manner uh, started affecting me quite a bit. And uh, I began to isolate from other people. I was in a work setting where I had to deal with a lot of people, so that was difficult for me. Uh, became impatient, uh, say I get, got angry. Uh, uh, drank a lot and I uh, uh, pretty much just felt didn't really like who I was didn't like who I was as a person a lot of nights were spent just uh, wishing I wouldn't wake up in the morning uh, that type of thing uh, days became very hard and long uh, a lot of negativity and uh, I ran into some legal trouble uh, marital problems and uh, you know, and I was also haunted by some events that took place when I was in the Gulf War uh, around the Pentagon during 9-11 and then uh, subsequently two tours in Iraq after that. Uh, and then, uh, but what was interesting is that there was these times where being, going to the museums and just sitting and looking at art uh, brought a lot of peace of mind to me. Didn't really, didn't put purpose back in my life, but uh, it was, it was, it was good. And so, and even then, I would pick up and paint and feel better when I had art involved in my life. But, you know, I would be overcome by events, jobs, situations, and I just didn't really do it consistently. Uh, and as that road became very small and narrow and dark, uh, I wound up in the VA system, uh, been, you know, in the hospital, been in through 90-day programs, been in several different VAs. Uh, 
and then I wound up uh, basically listening, living in a rescue mission for five months. And through that, uh, I worked in the kitchen and I helped take food, uh, you know, uh, did food runs and, and give food to the, uh, the people that were homeless around the community. And I, uh, I found that by serving other people, it took a lot off my mind and I was able to relate to other people's circumstances and see that really life overall wasn't that bad and I had a lot to be thankful for. Uh, and I just started on the road back and uh, I wound up in Florida. Uh, I had some friends down here and uh, came down and decided to live here. And then I met Larry Busby, who's a, another veteran artist and he told me about the Veteran Arts Center Tampa Bay and that's when I met Mac and uh, I just kind of was that puppy dog that didn't leave. And the more I stayed, uh, the more there was opportunity to do things. And uh, it inspired me to, to paint again on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, life is good. I don't have any complaints today. Uh, I have other things that I do for my recovery that are outside of art, but art has become an instrumental part of my day. Uh, I'm touched by it every morning when I walk in here and everything I do now has a sense of purpose and what we do as an art center. Uh, we have the music as therapy program going on now, artist therapy, uh, you know we just touch a lot of different people. Uh, a lot of people are affected positively whether they're actually going through a program or they just come in and see the center. People are wowed by uh, what they see that uh, people do and uh, I'm just very grateful to be a part of it, very humbled by the whole process. And, uh, you know, like I said, life is good. I have no complaints today. You know, I, I really feel like uh, I've recovered and it's a holistic thing and art has a hard, large part of that. As moonlight do not mind. The homes reach out to me. How the eyes smile to me. Still in peaceful dreams I see. First thing I think with veteran suicides, it's a, when we always have it's a national epidemic. We have all these national epidemics, but when we have our veterans committing suicides at whatever rate, one to 22, it doesn't matter. That that at all forces from the local, every leader, every veteran, every business leader, everybody should ramp up as so that we as a community, because it all starts with the communities, to try to reduce and eliminate these things of suicides. We have to make sure that our veterans and our families are taken care of and that we have true, true caring and true, true uh, understanding so that we make everybody that is considering it or thinking of that not to. And this is a very, very serious thing. I don't think it's getting the, the proper attention from all of our leaders. May it be our elected officials, our, our mayors, our representatives, state and federal, this is a national emergency because you know why? Service members are committing suicide. You would have to accept that all the affirmative replies, except perhaps the last one, are not misleading in any major degree. However, I think the last answer is misleading and we could not accurately describe our guest as a leading man. He's a misleading man. <laughs> a misleading man. Now that I'm back on the home front of Des Moines, Iowa, I had a chance to catch up with veteran artist Eric Morrissey. Uh, my name is Will Miracle Overstreet. Um, I am an art teacher in Waterloo, Iowa, and a uh, combat veteran. Veteran suicide is a, is a big issue. 
Um, it's not just um, one or two, it's, it's 22 a day. And it, it's friends and family members, it's brothers and sisters. Um, it's, it's people that, that we know and um, it's something that we need to try to combat on multiple levels. Um, legislation's great, um, but we need to find other, other ways to be able to get our brothers and sisters to uh, hold on and uh, hold on for that, uh, that help that, that is on its way, but we have to be able to uh, um, communicate that to them. My name is Eric Morrissey, and I'm a U.S. veteran of the United States Marine Corps. I do a lot of sculpture work. The latest work that I've done is mainly through uh, paper products. Uh, I started doing it in, uh, in therapy, not in treatment. And I uh, initially started doing it uh, to find a way to release some of the negative energy, the anger, the depression. And so I kind of, uh, I put that in my artwork and it kind of took me into a different place so I didn't have to focus on the negative. And I see that sometimes a person that is dealing with something that's traumatic, you know, just can't face that. You know, they, they're not ready to face that yet. They haven't even faced it with their family, let alone themselves. Um, to sit in a room with a strange, you know, with a stranger that is has a degree but can't relate to them in any form or fashion as far as their military experience, um, you know, it it, it allows them a, a way to express their soul through the arts, you know, and and perhaps by by utilizing this this less um, emotional. And, and verbal way of expressing that um, gives them an avenue to overcome such tough stigmas. Um, and, and we, in, in our culture, in our society, we deal with stigmas a lot. I, I, I think that there, there's a big stigma um, with, with, with veterans and like just asking for help to begin with um, is, is kind of something that's not seen as masculine, um, but also, you know, to add to that, to make to make art seems kind of can seem um, very non-masculine to some people. But you know, um, when I make art, you know, I get covered in paint. You know, I like to use a chainsaw. I like to use a blowtorch. You know, I like to use all those types of things. Um, there's nothing unmasculine about it unless you know you're using glitter and you know finger paint right but you know it, it's a it's a thing of with, with making and the same thing if you're building a, a a wooden table or anything like that you know using power tools you're making and that's that's really what we need to look at it as uh just a few days ago i met this man who i greatly admire he's a swedish physicist gustav bjornstrand and he told me that he no longer watches television he doesn't read newspapers and he doesn't read magazines he's completely cut them out of his life because he really does feel that we're living in some kind of orwellian nightmare now and that everything that you hear now contributes to turning you into a robot to me uh i don't think that uh it almost, it felt like it saved my sanity. I, I, I don't know how I, I could have done it without the help of, of my little creations, basically. The things that came out of, of me in my work through my hands. Uh, it just released a lot of pain. And uh, it was therapeutic for me. I can't talk for other people, but it, it's definitely something that I would have to say saved me from what I felt like was at the time through treatment I was I was I just I stopped caring about life I stopped caring about people uh, and it kind of grounded me a little bit it brought me back and uh, I'll never quit doing it I mean I love to do it so I, I hope that other people can find this kind of therapy through something as simple as a, a piece of paper and uh, like a pencil even, you know, like whatever. You just create whatever you have. It's amazing that you can find 
things to create out of nothing, garbage, people's recyclables, people, whatever. It just if you've got an imagination, you, you throw it together and and uh, you feel good about it. I don't care necessarily what other people think about my art. I hope that somebody therapeutically can enjoy it, or that uh, somebody finds a piece that um, they can relate to that helps them kind of, uh, you know, breathe a little better or uh, think a little more positive or anything that just helps them uh, with, with their thoughts and their, their, their emotions, basically. That's, that's why I did it for me. Um, anytime you make art, you're, you're, you're putting something forward. Um, you're getting something out and whatever it is that you do. Um, just the, the act of making it, it, it is a way of expressing yourself. And I think once you can find um, a voice within yourself, um, you can start finding kind of your way. Um, I think that uh, I wish that, that veterans would, would, would take art and, and, and use it. And, and it doesn't have to be the greatest thing in the world, but just making something. Uh, it doesn't matter how artistic you are. It's, it's, it's the ability to do something and create something. And if it's taken, if it's taking your mind away from maybe the suffering that you're, you're in or whatever, it, it doesn't matter really what it looks like. Uh, it's, all about putting yourself out there and, and creating I think that's that's the biggest thing um, you know I had a friend that that took his life a few a few years ago and what I wouldn't do just to sit down with him and, and just to make some art and just to help him get stuff out you know just the, it, it, as simple as that and you know it doesn't have to be the greatest thing in the world it doesn't have to be something that ends up in a, in a museum somewhere but just just something you know just make something and then to get you get, get get your ideas and your thoughts out when i was at Findhorn, i met this extraordinary english tree expert who had devoted his life to saving trees just got back from washington lobbying to save the redwoods he's 84 years old he always travels with a backpack because he never knows where he's going to be tomorrow and when i met him at Findhorn, he said to me where are you from? And I said, New York. He said, ah, New York, yes, that's a very interesting place. Do you know a lot of New Yorkers who keep talking about the fact that they want to leave but never do? And I said, oh, yes. And he said, why do you think they don't leave? I gave him different banal theories. He said, oh, I don't think it's that way at all. He said, I think that New York is the new model for the new concentration camp, where the camp has been built by the inmates themselves, and the inmates are the guards, and they have this pride in this thing they built. They built their own prison, and so they exist in a state of schizophrenia, where they are both guards and prisoners, and as a result, they no longer have, having been lobotomized, the capacity to leave the prison they've made or to even see it as a prison. And then he went into his pocket and he took out a seed for a tree and he said, this is a pine tree. He put it in my hand and he said, escape before it's too late. Through art therapy, you know, I've myself and I've also seen participants that were able to express positive feelings, um, you know, ex externalize some of the difficult emotions that they deal with from post-traumatic events. Um, art therapy also fosters in some discussion about how veterans can show more empathy towards one another. I think that's another thing about war is that, you know, that from my personal experience, is that I, that I did lose a sense of, of empathy. Uh, you can, I think you can only be in that kind of combat zone for so long before you do lose a touch on that side of empathy. And art has really helped me express that. It's also gave me a voice. It's also gave me a, a way to talk about talk about things in a um, without getting emotionally attached to them. I, you know, we always talk about art as and, and the critique itself is and, and discussing a statement of how the work looks, and, and so people can gain an understanding of it. And there are those components where people should gain their own sense of connection to the work. But it also gives you an ability to talk about things with, with less stress on the mind and, and getting less emotional about it. I can remember being in therapy sessions when I first started um, going through um, dealing with my post-traumatic stress 
trying to talk about it admitted so many emotions and so many feelings and so many thoughts that like whenever I would start to speak about things that were tough for me or, or um, were, were my most traumatic events, it was hard for me to express those things without getting uh, emotional about things or without getting angry um, or wanting to just stop and isolate. Art was a way that I could sit down with myself and begin to allow my my physical part of my body to render something in form that it could um, allow me to find pathways out of the emotional stage and transfer that into more of a cognitive and, and processing that work. There's no words to describe how good it makes you feel. You're releasing this negative energy, you're putting it into a piece, and that piece doesn't become negative, it, it becomes part of the healing process. I don't feel like killing myself right now, and I really think a lot of it has to do with this therapeutic art. Uh, it doesn't matter, I mean, I've, I've been through relationships, I've, been, I've had money, homes, beautiful cars, I, I just, you know, I've, this art, is what saved me, I think. It saved my life, and I hope that I can continue to do it, and it just gets better and better. But um... At one point in Eric's life, he was depressed or, you know, considering suicide and even attempted suicide, that he was able to find something that worked. Not to say that the other things aren't helpful and aren't working, but really it was art that really helped him turn around and see see the dividing line within himself about what is possible and what is a, a repurpose or a redirection. So how, how has art helped you deal with maybe some of the emotions that you've dealt with over in Afghanistan or in Iraq? I think as far as like uh, personally what, what, what's helped me is um, when I find certain things that are um, that don't work for me and a lot of times recently it's been political things that I don't like um, those things um, I found a great outlet in in making artwork um, it doesn't have to be on the cover of something but I've made it and it's out there and I can share it with people if they want to see it or not um, it's also something that when, when I make art that I can kind of close off everything else and whatever is going wrong, um, however small or whatever, I'm just kind of in my own world and locking in on that and, and, and working on something is, is a stress reliever. Um, I, I, think, I think that just, you know, again, just, just making things is, is really, you know, very helpful if you are someone that is uh, dealing with you know, whatever it is. I think that um, on, on the civilian side of, of trying to um, lower or end the number of veteran suicide, um, I think um, some kind of legislation needs to be passed. Actual actions need to happen. Um, I, I think we need to um, improve the VA and, and how we use um, or accept uh, mental health. Um, it's not even in the mission statement of, of the VA. Um, that, that's one thing for sure. I think um, the is it CBOs, um, there's very little. Um, if you live in a rural community, it's very difficult to be able to get to, to, a, to a mental health facility. Um, sometimes you have to wait three weeks to be able to get into somewhere. Um, there's a lot of things like that that can be, that can be helped. Um, and as far as the veteran community, we definitely need to police ourselves up and help our brothers out, um, making it known throughout our, our units that if you have any issues at all, um, any thoughts of, you know, doomsday scenarios, then that, that you contact any one of your brothers, any one of your sisters, and you try and, and, and work through that as opposed to doing that. In that, that awful thing and um, someone that, that, that has seen the other side of it where, where people have taken their lives you know um, there's no good that comes out of it you know the devastation that's left behind is 
far worse than whatever it is they've been going through. Right. Um, mothers, you know, in tears for years. Um, brothers, sisters, friends, just, you know, trying to deal with that on top of their own issues. You know, you kind of, it makes a situation worse. And when one person does it, other people tend to follow. So if, if you are someone that is looking into, you know, um, taking your own life, you may be, you know, ending someone else's as well. And uh, we, ha- we have to help our, uh, help our brothers and sisters out in, that, in every, every way possible. See, I think it's quite possible that the 1960s represented the last burst of the human being before he was extinguished. And that this is the beginning of the rest of the future now. That from now on, there'll simply be all these robots walking around. On several occasions, during even during interviews for this for this project, where I've communicated with people and tried to get them to open up to me just about simple things, and you can see that they, the emotions are so very close to the front of their mind that. You know, it is too hard to speak about those things. And a lot of times I think when people are having a difficult time to speak about those things, that they feel repressed. They feel like they should isolate themselves because they are going to get emotional when they do speak about things. So the encouragement towards the art part of it is that it is silent. There is no purpose to speak about it unless, you know, that is your choice to want to share those things. But really it's about, you know, releasing. It's about finding ways to express you know, a certain specific moment in time and, and rendering that and capturing that, whether it looks just like something, whether it's abstract, um, the, the aesthetic of it is not really important. It's about the expression and, and, and surfacing that. And oftentimes when I do a painting, you know, um, especially if it has an abstract feel to it, I'm not trying to aim to, to have it look like something. I'm aiming more for the, the release. What does it mean to me? What is my, what is my thought process? How, it, how is my mind healing and manifesting itself through, through the art? Um, and at the end of the result is, is that, you know, whatever I worked out during that process, whether the, the piece is magnificent or not, um, it has meaning and value to the person who is creating that, too, who is expressing those things. Congratulations, first of all, on a fantastic film. Um, I think obviously one of the questions that the film really does ask is um, what the world would be like without art and creativity in it. And I'm curious, um, this is a question for all of the panel, but perhaps uh, starting with Bill. This is the most important and a crucial period of your life. What you do now and what you do. Decide now at this age you may well determine which way your life shall go. The question is whether you have a proper, a solid, and a sound blueprint. A deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebody. thing is I want you to look right into the camera not at me and just give your final plea 
Uh, this is Will. You've been watching the Struggle Beyond the Plea. That's Struggle that, right? That's right. Way off. Struggle Beyond the Decade. Struggle Beyond the Decade. Hi, my name is Eric Morrissey. I'm a U.S. veteran of the United States Marine Corps. And you're watching Struggle Beyond the Decade. Um, yeah, I'm lost. You told me so much stuff. <laughs> that, so, uh, don't ask me what A plus B equals because I couldn't tell you that. But, uh, I mean, either right brain or left brain. Whichever brain is artistic, that's the side I got. So. Good afternoon. Oh, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. 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 Do Good evening. <laughs> Cut. That's not all I wanted to say here. <laughs> okay. And then five, four. Boom. That easy. That's how we do it. Easy peasy. <laughs>